Hello everyone, you're watching Physio Classroom channel and in this part of the Neurodynamics series, we are going to learn about the Radial Nerve Mobility Testing. Now please note when we say nerve mobility testing, it simply means an assessment maneuver that the therapist intends to apply on a patient to find out whether any abnormal mobility that is tension, compression or sliding exists within the radial nerve that can actually be participating or causing the patient's problem. The main indications for performance of the radial nerve mobility testing are in patients who complain of pain in the posterior shoulder region, lateral elbow region and the dorsal forearm region. So let's get started with the practical demonstration of radial nerve mobility testing that will enable the therapist to rule out the involvement of radial nerve and its associated neural components in causing the patient's symptoms. So to perform the radial nerve mobility testing, the therapist is going to make the patient lie down in the supine lying position. And the therapist is going to stand at the head end of the treatment table. Now the first thing that the therapist is going to explain to the patient is that imagine that there is a clock right above you and so that your head is pointing towards 12 and the legs are pointing towards 6. Now I want you to lie down obliquely so that your legs are pointing towards 5 and the head is pointing towards 11. Very nice. And the next thing is that the shoulder or the side that which we are going to test that side shoulder needs to come out of the couch. So this is going to be the starting position of the patient from where we are going to actually start the testing. Now from here the therapist is going to assume a wide stance position so that the therapist left thigh is actually contacting over the patient's right shoulder and this contact is going to be utilized later on to produce the shoulder depression movement by the shifting of the body weight from the back leg to the front leg. Now after the therapist has assumed this position, next the therapist is going to hold the patient's right upper limb in order to perform the neurodynamic testing for the radial nerve. And for this the therapist's left hand is going to contact the patient's right hand from the dorsum region. And the therapist's right hand is going to hold the patient's right elbow. Now the first movement for testing the radial nerve would be to produce the scapular or the shoulder depression movement. Now after the shoulder depression has been produced and maintained by the therapist, the therapist is next going to extend the elbow joint. And now from here the therapist is next going to add the shoulder internal rotation and forearm pronation movement. So now from here once we have added the shoulder depression, elbow extension, shoulder internal rotation, forearm pronation movement, the therapist is next going to flex the wrist joint and the fingers of the patient. And from here the last movement that will be added is the shoulder abduction movement and the quality of movement, the resistance to movement and whether this movement reproduces the patient's symptoms or not is going to be noted by the therapist. Now the differentiating maneuver to rule out the neural involvement during this test would be either release of the wrist flexion movement if the symptoms are more proximal let's say patient is experiencing shoulder pain in that case we are just going to release slightly the wrist flexion movement and if this alters the patient symptoms then we can confirm the radial neurodynamic test as positive. Now in case the patient's main complaint was pain in the dorsum of the forearm in that case the differentiating maneuver would be releasing of the scapular or the shoulder depression movement. Now please note if the patient's symptoms are not that easily reproducible and even after adding all the components the patient does not experience any increase in symptoms in that case we can sensitize the test further by asking the patient to side bend the head and neck on the contralateral side. So this was all about the important steps that are needed to be followed in order to perform the standard testing to rule out the involvement of the radial nerve in the patient's symptoms. So see you all in our next video till then keep learning keep sharing and stay connected.